With Wuthering Waves set to release in exactly two weeks, I wanted to take some time to discuss whether or not I think the game will be successful. I'm sure you guys have seen tons of these videos out there, but I really wanted to kind of, you know, give my perspective on the game. We're going to cover kind of the core aspects of the game, i.e. the combat, the overworld, the character design, and kind of touch upon the story, and whether or not I think these will make Wuthering Waves the smash hit that a lot of us think it will be. But before we jump into the meat and potatoes of the video, hi. I'm Sam. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. If you've been watching my content for some time, thank you. I appreciate you. Recently just did a face reveal on my live stream. So nice to nice to see you face to face. But Wuthering Waves, I'm incredibly excited for this game. You know, ever since it was revealed years ago, I have been eagerly anticipating its release. You know, I am very much so a combat driven gamer. You know, I grew up on action RPGs like Devil May Cry, God of War, Assassin's Creed. You name an action RPG, I've probably played it. So the fact that, you know, Kuro Games and Wuthering Waves kind of doubles down into the combat, I'm very, very excited. But I also know that, you know, we need to have more layers and, you know, more characteristics to make a good game. So let's jump into that. Let's discuss whether or not I think Wuthering Waves will be a smash hit. Now, as I'm sure we all are aware, Wuthering Waves definitely hangs its hat on its combat. Crow Games, also the developers of Punishing Grey Raven, aka PGR, they know how to make a good action RPG. I mean, PGR, objectively, is a very, very good game. The combat's awesome. The boss fights are dope. They, have, they make really good skins as well. You know, they have good combos. Pretty much, they, they know how to make a really good combat-centric game. Really, the only reason PGR didn't pop off was the marketing. Like, it had nothing nothing to do with the actual game. And I was a little trepidatious that, you know, Kuro wouldn't step up to the plate with their advertising for Weathering Waves. But I think they've done a, a pretty good job thus far. But the fact that, you know, Kuro Games, you know, this established developer that makes really good action RPGs is taking those core aspects and then putting them into you know, an open world game has me very, very, very excited. Now, if we jump into the actual combat of Wuthering Waves, you know, it is and has some similarities to other games in the genre. You know, you have your QTE, aka your, your normals, you have your skills, you have your ultimate or, you know, your burst abilities, but that's kind of where the similarities kind of stop. You know, Wuthering Waves also has intro and outro skills for each character, which is very cool. And you know, each of them has a different, you know, aspect or boon that they provide for their team. So you need to be able to, you know, understand that and manage that. But they also have the ecosystem. Now, the ecosystem is primarily, you know, the artifact or relic system for Wuthering Waves. Like each echo has stats associated with it, but each echo also has an ability. So some echoes have the ability to heal, some have a shield, some give you different attacks and abilities. So, you know, the fact that we have you know, the QTE, the, the normals, the, the skills and the burst, and we have the ecosystem, and we have intro and outro skills, coupled with the fact that there is, you know, perfect dodges and parries, and there's also pretty advanced, you know, aerial combos. This game has a lot of diversity on the, the combat front, so this is why I'm genuinely excited. You know, as I mentioned, I've played a lot of action RPGs in my day, so just seeing the gameplay of Wuthering Waves has me insanely, insanely excited. You know, I would say the combat is at least a 9 or 9.5. Obviously, we know what Kuro has done in the past, and I think they're really doubling down into the combat. But like I mentioned, combat isn't everything. It's the only thing. JK, it, it's not the only thing. Let's touch upon the open world. Now, Wuthering Waves definitely has a very specific theme they were going for. It is a post-apocalyptic game, and the open world and the environment definitely lends itself to that. You know, we've seen the footage. It, it's very gray tones. It's very dark. It's very muted. It definitely feels like post-apocalyptic. But for me, I, I kind of like the feeling because, you know, I've played a lot of games recently that are just you know, overly saturated, overly vivid. And yes, it looks beautiful in its own right, but it doesn't feel realistic. I'm definitely, you know, as I get older, I'm, I'm kind of a boomer. As I get older, I kind of appreciate more, you know, realistic tones and, you know, more realistic environments. So, you know, I know some people might be not, might not be as, you know, attracted to the overall 
design and overworld of weathering waves but for me i do really enjoy it I'm, I'm, i know i'm gonna enjoy exploring the game just because i you know i do i like post-apocalyptic post-apocalyptic that is hard to say movies uh and and shows in that genre so I, i'm used to kind of the the muted tones and so forth now let's also discuss the character design now the character design kind of doubling down on the realistic i don't know what it is about weathering waves but their character design definitely looks more i mean look at the the rover here i don't know if it's like the angles like the sharpness of the jaw it, it does look very realistic it doesn't look as i guess cartoony if i was classifying it but i i like it from the characters we've seen thus far there's not a ton of you know cast of characters to go off of but you know they have a good variety of characters you know they have encore who's kind of a little character they have the rover they have uh calcaro aka sephiroth aka kakarot who looks amazing they have uh jin yan so they do have a, a good variety of characters i hope they kind of continue to you know really double double down and over overhaul their design you know Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Road make phenomenal characters. So I, I, I'm i confident that Kuro can compete in that space as well. You know, PGR characters look amazing. They also have really good skin. So, you know, maybe if the base model of the character isn't as aesthetically pleasing as we like, I'm confident that Kuro can drum up a dope set of skins that are going to overhaul the characters that way. So all in all, I really like the character design personally. I think it looks very realistic. You know, a lot of the characters kind of do have like the similar you know face shape and what have you but i don't know that that doesn't really bother me and i'm just excited to see what sort of characters they can pump out now let's conclude with the story now for me i will say i am not the biggest story guy if i want a really good story i'll watch an anime i'll watch a movie i'll watch a tv show for me, like story shouldn't be, and th this is just my perspective here. Sh story shouldn't be what a game depends on for you know player enjoyment, player retention. It should be, it should be additive, right? And I think Wuthering Waves, based on what I've heard, the story is is okay. It doesn't sound like it's anything you know groundbreaking or or what have you. It sounded like Scar, kind of the first boss you fight, kind of had an interesting backstory, but it didn't seem like it was you know too engaging thus far, but you know, for me, the story is is really secondary or, or even tertiary. Yes, it'll keep players engaged and, and interested in the game overall. But you know, if you have to, if you have a game that's very story heavy and you know it doesn't really have anything else to fall back on, I think that becomes a little bit of an issue. But all in all, I am incredibly excited for this game. I think it's going to perform very very well. Obviously, you know, everyone's like. Is it the Genshin killer? Nothing will kill Genshin except Genshin Impact. Basically, I look at Wuthering Waves as, you know, we've had a we've had a great game for three years that really hasn't changed much. It's just kind of been this this staple comfort game. And then we have Wuthering Waves that's kind of trying to, you know, change the recipe a bit and and maybe appeal to more of the, you know, the hardcore gamers. But I do think, you know, Wuthering Waves will also be able to penetrate and appeal to the casuals as well i don't know if it'll be able to appeal to the casuals as much as genshin like genshin is phenomenal at appealing to the casual audience and you definitely have to take your hat off to hoyo on that front but all in all i am incredibly incredibly excited for wuthering waves and that's pretty much it gamers so comment down below are you excited for wuthering waves as i am and i'll be kind of covering the game pretty in depth so I appreciate you all so much. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.